What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now in today's video we'll be focusing on task 3 and task 5 speaking questions. So the integrated speaking questions that are based on conversations. Now before we dive into today's questions I want to first congratulate all of my students who were able to achieve and obtain the goals that they needed and deserved. Hard work always pays off and effort never turns its back on you. Keep that in mind. All right, that's the reading passage that we'll be covering today for task three. It's the announcement. Let's read it together. Now, the title is Housing Renovations Planned. Over the last 10 years, the number of Central College students, blah, blah, blah. In an effort to counteract the trend, the college has announced a plan to renovate its on-campus housing. Thank you. So the beginning sentence is, according to the announcement, the university is planning to renovate its on-campus housing. Now, let's keep reading the passage to find the advantage of this new plan. Okay, so the next sentence, the renovations will take two years and they will include improvements to the bathrooms, lighting, and heating in the dormitories, okay? So this new decision will improve the bathrooms, lighting, and heating in the dormitories. We don't need the reading passage anymore. Let's listen to the conversation. The college is making a mistake with this new plan. What do you mean? I think it'll really help accomplish the college's goals. Don't be so sure. All that construction for two years, it's going to create a lot of noise. Well, you mean in the beginning, for students still living in the dorms? Yeah, students who are trying to sleep or do work are constantly going to be disturbed. So people will try to get as far away as possible, probably by moving off campus. So they'll lose even more people. Huh, I hadn't thought of that. But still, once all the construction's over, more people will probably want to live in the dorms, right? I mean, the living conditions will be so much better. If they can afford to, do you know how the college is planning on paying for this plan? By raising the cost of campus housing. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so if it's more expensive, why would people want to move back into the dorms if they can rent an apartment for less money? All right, all right. So. The woman in the conversation did not like the university's new plan. In the first reason, she said that the construction will create a lot of noise. So, students who are trying to sleep or do work in the dormitories will constantly be disturbed and want to move off campus. Needless to say, this new policy will make the school lose even more people. Okay, now for the second reason, she said that the university is planning on raising the cost of campus housing. As a result, if living in the dormitories becomes more expensive, many students will choose to rent an apartment for less money. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, now that we know what I took notes on, let's listen to my sample response. According to the announcement, the university is planning to renovate its on-campus housing. However, the woman is not looking forward to this. First and foremost, the woman mentioned that the construction will create a lot of noise. So, students who are trying to sleep or do work in the dormitories will constantly be disturbed and really want to move off campus. In other words, the university will end up losing more people because of this decision. On top of this, the woman also said that the school is actually planning on raising the cost of on-campus housing. As a result, if living in the dorms becomes more expensive, a lot of students will choose to rent an apartment for less money instead. Even though the school believes that this new decision will improve the bathrooms, lighting, and heating in the dormitories, the woman opposes the university's new plan for these two reasons mentioned in the conversation. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. All right, now, this would have to be one of my most satisfactory sample responses because my speaking pace was very steady and I was able to say everything I wanted within 60 seconds. Even thank you very much for your time and consideration. So guys, our mission is to speak steadily no matter what. No matter how much information or no matter how little information we have, the way we speak, the way we deliver our speech, our ideas should never change, okay? That's gotta be our constant variable in our speaking performance, you understand? Okay, now let's move on to task five. By the way, Frank, I heard you got a summer research position with Professor Davis. Uh-huh, but I've got a problem. Oh? Yeah, well, 
Since I didn't hear from her for so long, I assumed I didn't get the position, so I didn't apply for a dorm room for the summer. I'm afraid it's too late for that now. Yeah, the deadline for campus housing applications has already passed. So what are you going to do now? Well, I can stay with my parents. They live two hours from here, and so I thought I could drive and commute to campus every day. I know my mom and dad would be happy to have me over for a few weeks, and most of my old friends will be home for the summer, so in a way it'd be fun. Yeah, I understand. But you'd spend quite a bit of time on the road going back and forth. Won't you get tired? Yeah, that thought did cross my mind. The other thing I could do is rent an apartment off campus. Besides being much closer to work, I'd also save tons of money on gas. Uh-huh. But then you'd have to pay rent. I know. There's always something, isn't there? All right, so in this conversation, a guy named Frank had a problem because he didn't apply for a dorm room for the summer. The first solution is staying with his parents and the second solution is renting an apartment off campus. Now I'm going to pick the second solution and at the very end I'm going to say that living close to school is obviously very crucial for Frank, okay? Now the upside of my solution is that he will be able to save a lot of money on gas. Now the downside of the other solution is the man will have to spend a ton of time on the road to go to school. Now the downside of my solution is that Frank will still have to pay rent, okay? That's all we need, believe it or not. Now since we know what I'm going to say, let's listen to my sample response. By the way, I'm choosing to ignore the upside of the first solution, which is the other solution in this situation. And that's because we don't need this at all. But if you want to use it, it's that his mom and dad would be happy to have him over during the summer. Alright? Okay, now let's listen to my sample response. Frank is in between a rock and a hard place because he did not apply for a dorm room for the summer. Fortunately, he can choose from two possible solutions, which are staying with his parents or renting an apartment off campus. If I were in the man's shoes, I would personally prefer the second solution. To start with, this solution would be much better for his issue at hand because he will be able to save a lot of money on gas. On the other hand, since Frank will need to spend a ton of time on the road to go to school, it will be impractical to choose the other possible solution. Although the man will still have to pay rent, getting an apartment off campus would still be better because living close to school is obviously very crucial for Frank as doing so can affect his future positively or negatively. Needless to say, from where I stand, the second solution is the much better choice for these reasons. Thank you for your time and consideration. All right. Now, if for some reason you don't feel good about saying as doing so can affect his future positively or negatively, be my guest and skip it. In other words, your response can end after very crucial for Frank in this situation. So if you realize that you don't have too much time left and you don't want to make a mistake when it comes to saying as doing so can affect his future, just take a short break, take a split second rest, and then move on to needless to say, or just stop speaking. But keep in mind that when it comes to the end of a phrase or a sentence, your intonation has to be going down rather than rising, okay? So as long as you're able to break the bad habit of using a rising intonation whenever you're wrapping up the sentence, you'll always be able to stop speaking and not feel bad about it, okay? All right, so those are my sample responses for today's questions. If you enjoyed them, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you still have not done so for some reason, Share the content with your close friends and family members if they need the extra assistance, but most importantly, if you are a self-disciplined and dedicated person, reach out to me about my tutoring services. Let's get the score that you need and deserve as quickly as possible while improving your English fluency as much as possible. See you in the next video. Peace.